I, ne I never studied why, why the reasons why Khrushchev transferred the Crimea uh, from the ministry, the 24 blocks, from uh, Russia to Ukraine. My guess is it's because there's no land connection between Russia and the Crimea, but there is one between Ukraine and Crimea, so probably that's why. But I really don't know. Because that's beyond the Stalin period. That didn't happen until after Stalin died. The Crimean Tartar issue I discuss at some length in Khrushchev Live with appropriate documentation. The documents of this transfer have been studied in Russia by an, uh, you know, a, a conventionally anti-communist scholar who, however, is very good about publishing primary sources. And I refer you to that. Uh, I think it's, I, I really think that that explains it very well. Of course, that the Crimean Tartar nationalist narrative today is that this was a genocide, is that this was completely unjustified, and that's nonsense, okay? <coughs> that's, that's just their narrative, which is not challenged in the mass media in the United States. But, uh, but I just refer you uh, to the documentation there. About Ukraine, well, you know, in 1991, on top of something, well, 1991, Everybody who lived in what's now the Ukraine at that time was the Ukrainian SSR woke up and they found out that now you're in a new country. Guess what? Now you're in a separate country. You have to have a separate passport. And what's more, within two or three years, you have to learn to speak Ukrainian if you didn't know before. Um, now, Ukraine is a multinational, Ukrainian SSR is a multinational state. There are Poles and lots of Russians and Ukrainian speakers. And since Particularly since 2000, although it started before that, there's been a, a big effort by the Ukrainian nationalists to restrict the rights of non-Ukrainian speakers. Ukrainian nationals, by the way, were, were uh, basically produced a law. Uh, and after World War II, they, they predated, predated World War II, basic, but after World War II, they, they were supported by the British and Canadian, <coughs> particularly the United States, CIA, and when 1991 came, they flooded back into Ukraine and formed the educational infrastructure for the new state. So they have, they now teach all this Nazi or generated Ukrainian nationalist propaganda as the truth in Ukrainian schools. And of course, it's not the truth, and I discussed some of this in my talk yesterday, and a lot more of it is discussed in my book on what lies about Stalin that could come out from us. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the Ukrainian nationalists are very powerful, and they are the force, the main force, political force behind the Maidan Square takeover of Kiev and, and the chasing out of Yanukovych. It probably is a crook. I mean, they're all crooks. They're all bad. You know, sometimes we all be crooks. And the Russian-speaking population, mainly of eastern Ukraine, uh, are obviously right to feel threatened. I don't think that they're going to secede. I don't think that, that the Russian government wants them to secede. I think they want them to stay in Russia, so in Ukraine, so that they'll counterbalance to some extent the nationalists, so that Ukraine will remain more or less neutral as opposed to hostile. After all, if all the Russian speakers somehow or other were to leave Ukraine, that would leave only the Ukrainian nationalists in control, and Russia would have yet another hostile state on its borders. So that, I don't think that's going to happen. But certainly, the Ukrainian nationalists are, are very powerful in Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is the only country where monuments and, and streets are named after a fascist mass murderer, which is Stepan Bandera, who is the leader of the organization of the Ukrainian nationalists. There are monuments in western Ukraine to Bandera, and in eastern Ukraine, there are monuments to the victims of the OUN. So this is a severely split country, and that's that's the origins of all of this. By the way, the, just a word about, about referenda. Nobody gave a referendum in Ukraine to anyone in 1991 saying, do you want to be this territory to be part of Ukraine? Do you want to be part of Russia? Do you want to do something else? There was no referendum now. So when, whatever the, the problems may have been with this Crimean referendum and, uh, a few months ago, I mean, at least it was a referendum, right? That never happened before. It never permitted to happen. 